Hi. In this tutorial, we will take a look at a new feature of Mario Cinchpack 5R3 that will help you speed up the channel creation necessary to export data for Mari. So here I have a simple material, so just a few tiles, and then they're connected to a shader, so I can see it perfectly fine in the viewport. However, I wouldn't be able to export this material yet, because as you can see in my channels list, I have no channels created. If I were to launch an exporter, I can't export because there's no channels. So in this case, I would either have to create a channel or multiple channels by the channels palette, or in the node graph, press tab and type channel to create a channel node, and then set up all the necessary information, such as the name, color space, size, etc., and then manually slot it into the connections between the material itself and the shader, so in order to export it. Now this can be quite a long process. I mean, the Unreal shader here only has six inputs mapped, but on bigger shaders, such as, for example, the Arnold shader or even the Renderman shader, there can be literally dozens of inputs that can be mapped. So the process of creating channels can be quite a long one. So it can take several minutes easily. So this is where the new feature of extension pack 5R3 comes in. And you can find this in the right mouse click menu of the node graph under the miscellaneous section. And there's a create channels from node option. The create channels from node tool works based on your node selection. If I select one of these tiled nodes here and launch the tool, the output is selected for me and I can easily create a new channel. So if I just launch this, the channel has been slotted in between the Unreal shader and the tiled node. If instead I select the Unreal shader itself, the tool will instead now work based on the input of the node. So you can see I have all my inputs of the shader available. And if I just click on this connected button, then all the slots that have a node connection that is not connected to a channel will be automatically activated for me. So now I can just go ahead and create the channels again. And now everything is ready to be exported. The tool will remember the channels you created last. If I go to a second Unreal shader here, which has a material connection and launch the tool again, you can see exactly the same channels have been marked as active as I used before on the other Unreal shader. By default, the tool will list the ports in the order that they are connected. Here I have, for example, a gap where there's no uh, data connected, so the specular has no connection, bump has no connection, etc. If I launch the tool, you can see, however, that the ports here are listed in the order where there is a connection. So everything with a node connection is listed first. On materials, because the Mario materials by default connect to every port of a shader, obviously this will not be the case because every port has a connection. However, still, because the tool remembers the last setting, you can easily see what was last used and you can quickly create your new channels. One of the benefits of the tool is that it allows you to save presets of settings for future use. For my Unreal shader, I have custom naming conventions for my channels that I want. If I want to keep this, I'm just going to add a new preset. And now I've saved these settings for future use. If I made a mistake, for example here, I missed one of the namings. Change the naming and click on this Update Preset button. And now this Unreal shader preset has been updated with this new setting. Within the dialog, you can also do multi-selections. So for example here, my resolutions are not yet set properly. So I'm just going to select all these and then just change the resolution. You have several buttons available here to control, for example, your selection. So you can deselect, you can select all, you can select only the active ones. So everything that is active will be now marked. You can invert these selections as well. If you hover over these uh, buttons, you can see in the tooltip, these things are also mapped to hotkeys by default. So for example, here, control I, I can quickly invert the selection. You can also activate the different rows quite easily. So here, for example, I could activate all, I can activate none. I can also do selections like this and click on this. And you can see things will update based on the row selection. And you can also uh, activate only connections. So in this case, everything's connected. You can activate um, your selection. So this is kind of the same as, um, let me deactivate this first. So this is the same as, clicking in here. And then finally, we have the last used, which is the 
setting that was last used when the tool was used was launched. So if I click on last used, you can see all the channels that I created for this previous annual shader that is a bit lower here in the node graph are now reactivated. So if I just create my channels now again, and let's massage this a little bit, and now everything is set up for me again. The next time I launch the tool, the same preset will be slotted in in the uh, drop down again. So my last active preset was the Unreal Shader. So the next time I launch the tool, the Unreal Shader preset will be automatically loaded again. In this case, because I have now channels already connected to these different ports, I only see a smaller list of ports. So everything that doesn't have a channel selected. Now what happens if I create a different shader model? So let's create a Arnold standard surface and launch the tool again. Now you can see, okay, all my naming is not really correct because by default, it now selects the Unreal shape. So this is where the presets come in handy. So I just select my other preset, the Arnold Standard Surface, and I will have the preset that applies to this shader. You can also rename a preset quite easily and you can export these presets as well. Here you can export and import a preset file. These files will export all your available presets. What is nice about this is that it allows you to set up an environment variable and load in preset files. So if we hover above this, you can see there's an environment variable called Mari channels from node. If you point this environment variable to a configuration file, everyone who opens Mari with this environment variable on will automatically get the uh, presets that are part of the exported preset file. So this way you can easily set up your team um, to have standardized presets with a standardized naming convention, standardized color space, etc. So that makes it quite easy to just pipeline uh, naming conventions, for example. The last feature I would like to draw your attention to can be found under the resolution dropdowns. So usually in Mari, when you create resolutions, you create resolutions across the entire channel. So I set the entire channel to 512 or 2K, for example. With this dialog, you can also inherit the resolutions from a different channel. So here, for example, I have a little gramophone model and it has multiple UDIMs. So you can see it has a bunch of UDIMs. Let me just create a standard channel. So now I've created a new channel with 1K resolution across all UDIMs. Let's say I want to take all of these UDIMs and just set them to a different resolution. So I'm going to Right mouse click, patches, resize selected, and set this to 512. So now I have a mixed UDIM resolution layout. If I were to create new channels, I would always have to do this setup for each channel. However, with the create channels for node tool, I can easily just inherit my resolutions. So I'm just gonna activate my connected channels and select this. And I'm just gonna click from channel and use the resolution for my quick channel. So now whenever I create new channels, the exact same resolution layout as the source channel will be applied to the new channels. If you want to see where this from channel is getting this information from, you can just hover above the resolution field and in the uh, tooltip, you will see the source channel that is used. 